Hello everyone, this is James Webb, which means you're watching Cinema Web. This is our fifth, fifth Buchan International Fantastic Film Festival mini review. Now today's review is a little bit different. Uh, it is at the DMZ, the second of two different Korean films that I watched during the festival. And if you have been watching my channel, then you know that I also write reviews for kmovielove.com. Uh, if I write a review for kmovielove.com, I typically do not do a very in-depth review on this channel. Now, the DMZ is a little bit different because while I did write up a full in-depth review, it is not published. Uh, it is not published because I wrote too many reviews too quickly and so they're getting spaced out a little bit. And I thoroughly enjoyed the DMZ. As soon as I finished watching the DMZ, I was very excited to attend the uh, special guest speaker, which was the director. However, I couldn't, for reasons that I'm going to get into in a minute, uh, the DMZ concerns a police detective who is hunting an escaped serial killer. They uh, wander into the DMZ, the titular DMZ, uh, and she accidentally steps on a landmine, which means she cannot lift her foot. Uh, so she's now trapped in the DMZ with her foot on the landmine, unable to move, while a serial killer and a Japanese spy are both lurking around. The most impressive aspect of the DMZ is that it does a lot with very little. Uh, it's definitely low budget, has a very small cast and crew. Uh, it's only got three main characters, but it does a lot with them. It has minimal special effects, but it's careful not to overuse them, uh, which really impressed me. I think people interested in filmmaking and interested in kind of minimalist what can you do with the smallest amount possible? Uh, the DMZ is very impressive in, in that regard. Uh, it's, it was interesting, funny, good tension, good action. That said, there were a couple of problems with the movie. I believe the audio might not have been balanced for the theater. I'm not sure, but the dialogue was quite loud, uh, a bit louder than is usually comfortable during a movie. Also, we had not slept in a very long time. That was our fifth movie in a row. So we were quite exhausted at the time, which may have made the next problem even worse, which is the camera motion. Uh, I don't know for certain, but I would say it is unlikely that it was shot using a gimbal. So the a gimbal or a, or a stabilizer for for that matter. So it, there's quite a lot of shaky cam going on, like a lot of of movement. It didn't bother me too much. However, uh, Cinema Web's very own Kim Myun unfortunately got motion sickness. That's why I was unable to attend the the guest speaker was because uh, we had to focus on taking care of of her because her condition really went down after watching that movie. I think the combination of, you know, not much sleep plus that quick movement didn't do so well. We also ended up sitting relatively close to the screen, which also made it worse. I think if you're watching the DMZ on a smaller screen, then a lot of these problems would be alleviated if the audio is out of balance, you know? turn the volume down and uh, most likely the camera movements won't be quite as extreme on the smaller screen. I think the interesting thing about the DMZ is that it, it's clearly made with a lot of passion and uh, I think that that really shows. I think you can feel it watching the movie and there's some moments in which are really well shot. Like, For example, there's a scene where all three characters are in place at once and the movement of the camera around is just really cool looking. I, I definitely liked that scene a lot. Uh, and there's a scene towards the end, I don't really want to spoil what happens, 
but there's a scene towards the end that I loved the way it was framed because it was framed in a way that acknowledged the limitations of the filmmaker and created a way more impactful scene without relying on heavy special effects. Uh, it's in direct contrast with The Closed Ward, which was not a movie made with a lot of passion and a movie that never attempted to hide its bad special effects. It always was front and center bad CG blood. While this one has some not very good gun effects, you know, the, it's, it's clearly a gun graphic. However, uh, the revolver only has a limited number of bullets and they're used very sparingly. And that causes the special effects to not be quite as noticeable. Uh, so in a different movie, it might have kind of detracted from what you were watching, but I think for the DMZ, it, it kind of worked. Because of this, I'm, I'm quite interested in seeing some of In Chun Oh's future work, like they had, as soon as the movie ended, a trailer for Dust Angels, and uh, that looks like a lot of fun. So I'm hoping to check that out in the future. I definitely recommend checking out the DMZ, maybe get some friends together and watch it on your TV, have a few beers. I think that would be a blast. Uh, not too many beers because again, that camera does shake quite a bit. Anyway, this has been Cinema Web. Please uh, like and subscribe down below. Uh, maybe consider sharing this video. Uh, we could use a little bit more exposure. Uh... 재미는 있었지만 너무 멀미나요. <laughs>